and welcome to this special edition DVD of My Baby Zombie Village. I'm the writer and director, one of the producers, even actor and lighting and a DP on this film. As you can tell from my job roles, there wasn't many people involved, it was very independently self-funded, but um, I want to take you behind the scenes and give you an in-depth of how we made this film. Um, let's start with the zombie concept. Uh, if you know me well, then anyone who knows me well will tell you that I am a zombie maniac. I love zombie films. I have done since a young age. Um, I own many Italian classic zombie films and other zombie films from around the world, but my favourite kind of zombie film is the Italian 70s, early 80s video nasty films. Um, that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Uh, I also love the cannibal films just as much, Italian cannibal and zombie films. Uh, in fact, I would love to do a cannibal film, but I'd like to do it in the style of Cannibal Holocaust and Cannibal Fox in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, and I really would need to raise a budget to get the cannibal extras and the uh, rainforest, which I'm trying to raise money at the moment. Uh, in fact, Zombie Village was made to uh, show investors what I could do on a mere budget and in fact Zombie Village was made for about £150 and that was money from my pocket, from Natalie Pledge's pocket who you will see interviewed later on this disc and uh, Mark Price who was a producer for Chapter 5, Massacre Number 13 and assistant director on that chapter. Us three funded it, um, I funded it mostly. <laughs> Uh, I always find my projects quite a lot. Hi, my name's Natalie Pledger and I was an executive producer, one of the DPs, a makeup art artist and one of the funders. Jason, the director, and myself came up with the idea to make, uh, well, mostly Jay, Zombie Village. We'd made a, a, sh a ten minute short horror uh, zombie movie before called Zombies in the Wood which we took to uh, the Two Days Later Film Festival in Margate and it won Best Film there. So we were on a real high about winning that and we really wanted to make a longer um, movie about zombies. We hadn't got it out of our systems yet. Hi there, I'm Ken and as uh, some of the other cast and crew may have told you, I'm not quite up there in the head. I'm a little bit of a nutter. And um, as you might have seen from the last week we have done, Zombie Village, um, yeah, that was great fun uh, doing. But, to be honest with you, there were some really hard times in there. Uh, like when Jay made me carry the big toxic waste bowel all the way over to this really smelly, dinky, sort of like horrible lake thing, which he threw himself in, which I can't understand why he did it, because it was the middle of the summer. Not the middle of the summer, the middle of the winter. Yeah, that's an outtake. <laughs> Hi, my name's Peter Watson from uh, PJ Watson Pictures. Uh, I've worked with Jason and Dan for quite a long time now, probably coming up on five years. Uh, I met Daniel at school and we were friends straight away. We're both into films, both like the same sort of things, we get along well. And um, I met Jason through him uh, and just hit off straight away, like the horror films, both of us. Just uh, started to help him with some of the films that he was making, like, uh, really early ones so like House on the Hill and uh, The Evil Within which were all good, only had little little parts in that and Jason had his little cameos. Uh, they were real fun to work on, not really doing much dialogue or anything but they were fun. Uh, after that we moved on to Obsession which is a brilliant film for a short film. Went to a couple of festivals, did really well got some really good responses from different channels and stuff. Uh, I really like that film as well. My uh, gutting scene obviously makes the, uh, makes the whole film. Um, Ken's the killer in that. He's, he's a pretty nice guy. He's always fun to work with. <laughs> Dan's brilliant acting in that. That's Oscar winning stuff right there. Yeah, my name's Elliot, and I was on the scene of Zombie Village, the epic zombie flick by Jason Impey. And I starred as a zombie, basically, just eating Jason's flesh in the garden, around the back of his house. 
a brilliant way to spend a night, I must say. <laughs> um, getting the makeup done was probably the best bit because we, my mate Dan, got salami all over his face like a right muppet. Uh, but yeah, the film was pretty cool, and I didn't mind doing it for Jay. <laughs> Been expecting you. Yeah, anyway. Hi, I'm Daniel Mitchell. I played uh, Larry and some other parts in Zombie Village. I've known Jay for about, carry the seven, had the nine, about eight or nine years. So I've known him for quite a long time. I've only actually liked him for about. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's been good work with him. We started off doing really amateur films, like news reports about aliens attacking the earth. I think we've got a couple of clips left over from that. It's quite good, though. And then we've basically just moved on and up, really. Jay's recommitted to his work, still being mean to me and to use me in general. So, um, I think you may have seen the roof jumping scene. It wasn't my idea. I got pushed off and then decided to make me do it again and again. And yeah, we all had a good. Well, everyone laughed at me about it. That was actually real blood using that film. So I wasn't too happy about that bit. The only other thing I wasn't really too happy about was. Uh, the point about Mickey taking. Jason, once when I came home from school to the scene, said I was too fat and sent me back home to the gym. What we didn't know is I stole a five from his wallet and went to Burger King. So there you go, Jay. Now you know. Yeah. yeah. The zombie was easier to the cannibal at this moment in time because the settings could be urban or I love the uh, isolated setting. I love being in the country, hence zombie village in the village cut off, it's all in the forestry. Well, as I live in Milton Keynes, and it was shot on location around Milton Keynes, except for Chapter 5 that was in a flat in London, um, it was ideal, because Milton Keynes is a city in the country, so we had country all around us. I live right near Great Linford Village. We, we, had, we had locations that were amazing, um, so that was not a problem. And zombies, well, you know, loads of people, all your friends and family, want to be zombies. So you just invite them around. You just give them a bit of makeup, and they all do it for free because they just love being around you, making a zombie film, and being in a film, of course. And there you go, because zombies, you know, cannibals need tried people here. Well, with zombies, we just get some white powder, stick it on the face, black under the eyes and mouth, influenced from a film I've seen, um, the look, but it does the trick. And with Zombie Village, we had many different kinds of zombies. Um, we, we, we had the background zombies who looked alright uh, because they're, they're just background, they're, they've got some white powder, they've got the black powder but then we had the close to the camera where we had to pull the stops out for the gore so we stick the blood and we, we make fake wombs um, if, it's just a, if it's just a scene of one zombie and that's a key scene because the zombie's got to leave the scene uh, then we put all the stops out. We had three makeup artists for chapter 5 but chapter 5 was the only chapter that stands out, being in London, having extra people on board, having all the extras, a big organised shoot, bang. The rest of it was on our own. I was down a bit on King's lead in the, sh the, the, the shoot without a lot of additional help. Um, but a young old filmmaker, um, a, a good rise and talent filmmaker who I've worked with many times, Peter Watson, he, um, he was assistant director for chapter 6, so it was, um, you know, I really needed his help. Uh, that, that night because you know I, I was doing so much on my own it's great to have the additional help and Peter's very creative I like to listen to Peter's ideas and get some influence from him because um, I made a film called Obsession uh, a very long time ago now uh, and that did well at the time it got shown it got me some recognition um, but Peter who was in that film wrote a script called Beyond Darkness Dave's story which is a prequel, which me and him teamed up and directed together because I really like the script, I liked his idea and I like working with Peter because um, I think that boy's got some potential um, in fact I want to do many more projects throughout my life with him um, so Peter was a great help in fact he saved my life because he was camera 2 and I was camera 1 um, now Daniel Mitchell who plays the bartender Larry who gets killed in that chapter, my god um, we were doing some really good gore, we were pulling his cheeks off. I laid back the footage to have a playback, to have a look. My tape was chewed. All of it was fine, there was just a few key shots with the knife getting thrown into our zombie extra Joe. 
Um, my, 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 my tape, it was faulty from the manufacturer, has happened to me before. It's about a film I do, it was true. But luckily, Peter was being very independent, got the shots. Um, I directed him as to what I wanted. He, he knows what I want anyway. He's very much into the films I'm into. He could very much see what I was trying to do in Zombie Village and could appreciate that. And he, um, he, he bagged some shots for me that saved me from doing that reshoot, which I might not be able to have done. I might not be able to have got everyone together again. I mean, I wasn't exactly paying anyone. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to create that moment again. We had that that night. We had the, we had the, we had the weather with us. We had the mist. The we had that atmosphere. And it's, it's, a, it's a good scene. Um, I, I, it's not my favourite scene, though, because, you know, um, I, I, I've got a lot of favourite... I've got a lot of favourite scenes. I can't really name a favourite scene. Um, I do like me getting killed because I do think that was quite gory and I like a bit of gore and I think we pulled that off quite well. Uh, I've made a film Zombie Village, no sorry, <laughs> I've made a film Zombies in the Wood prior Zombie Village. It's kind of the film that got me the oomph to do Zombie Village because I won best film for it and it was a zombie film and it was my first zombie film and it was a really good first zombie film. It was only a 10 minute short that's on this disc for you. Um, but I tried to do a real gore zombie scene in that um, where Ken, the mad zombie in Zombies in the Wood also plays the mad redneck in Zombie Village, eats me. I'm on the floor, he rips my stomach open, you know, the classic zombie gut scene. The thing is with Zombies in the Wood is it actually didn't turn out that gory, it was just a nice little bit uh, It was alright, I was a bit disappointed, I wanted to make it bad. This was my give it an oomph in Zombie Village. At the end, this this is um this is my take two. This is to try and up the level. I'm I'm happy to say I think we did that. There was some good camera work there and some good angles. Uh, I mean Natalie was DOP in that scene. Um she did some good camera work. There was, I like the low angles of you know the, the gore. When Jay offered me the chance to be an obsession I was like, yeah definitely okay. Sounds good. We done the shoot on Friday and I, on Thursday night, I got told by my work, don't need you for tomorrow, so you can take the day off. I was like, yeah, great, okay, that sounds cool. So I ring up Jay and I go, Jay, I can come in and we can do some shots in the morning. And Jay was like, yeah, that'd be really great. Um, so we come in and that, and as you might see from in some of the obsession shots, there's a lot of, like, cold mist coming out of my mouth, which has a creepiness to it. That was a really good bonus effect, so you can see it was getting, it was shot in the morning. Um... Then the next film I guess we done was uh, The Zombie Years in the Wood. Uh, but before we done that, I swear we done um, uh, some extended shots for Obsession. Zombies in the Wood, wow. Uh, we won, obviously we won the uh, um, Margate Award uh, two days later. And, uh, getting there, now, that was fun. Um, yeah, we got really lost. Uh, I think we were about three hours out of uh, track for, by the time we got there. Uh, we ended up on a little island called the Isle of Sheppy. And uh, when I showed Jay where we were on the map, uh, he wasn't too pleased. <laughs> um, we did get there. Um, that was great. We won the award and that. Um, I got very, very drunk since, you know, giving out free beer, you know? We, you're not going to turn that down. And I may have come out singing We Are The Champions. After that, I can't really remember much. Um, next thing we done, Zombie Village. Um, Jay had been talking about for doing it for quite some while, and uh, there was a lot of uh, problems getting the film off the ground. Uh, it did take a few months to do it now, but once we eventually got all the shots down up here, uh, that was an intensive week. Um, yeah, um, I think over Christmas time it was getting edited and that, and then bang, here we go, we got the final cut. So we came um, up with the idea of making Zombie Village, and we wanted to make it, wanted to make it totally different from the normal zombie movies that you've that are out there so it was kind of like we made we made it um, so it was crossed between probably Dawn of the Dead meets Pulp Fiction so that people would have to really concentrate and really follow the story uh, I'm really impressed with the stuff that we've made well, Jason mostly, like the editing and everything, but uh, the films come out really well, I think. 
and um, obsessions really the start of of the horror films where we kind of uh, really realised that we could make something good and <laughs> with the gore and special effects that are in it I think that's what moved on to make other films we uh, Beyond Darkness which hopefully you've seen Dave's story was a prequel to our first real big hit obsession Beyond Darkness basically Jason and Peter's idea of a good film where they just recruited me and Elliot who thought we were going in for a muck about it was actually really good though but that featured just us lot being gimps. But it was good. It was good fun. So, yeah. Cheers, love. Uh, some people may say I'm over the top of it. But, you know, if you're going to watch a zombie film, what is the story of zombies? Dead bodies rising from their grave, eating you. you got to expect some gore, haven't you? Um, I find it entertaining. I hate censorship in this country. We're adults, we can decide what we want to watch. I'm all for protecting children. I don't believe in showing children the film snuff or, you know, Hellraiser or whatever. Yeah, I agree with the BBFC in rating stuff. 18, 15, 12A, PG, U. Yeah, that's fine, right? Because you need guidance as to what the film is going to be. You see an 18, you're going to expect some strong stuff. You see a 15, you're going to expect some mild stuff. Um, I agree with people being that age and over to watch the film. Um, I do not agree with them cutting anything out of the film because if you're going to watch a film like Cannibal Holocaust you know you're going to watch a bad film you maybe even want to put a special warning on it some films have special warnings on the cases and that's not a problem either because you know it really is warning you it's not as if it's on TV um, you don't have to watch it and if you start watching it and you don't like it turn it off you get people who complain they've watched the whole thing and they say oh it's disgusting from beginning to end or at the beginning why don't you turn it off um, and banning things altogether is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Um, you know, you go to America, things are not banned and cut like they are over here. Um, you can go on the internet and buy this stuff. The BBFC are not preventing it. In fact, you ban something or you cut something and it gets labelled a video nasty. It makes you curious. You want to see it more. You're going to go out of the way to get a copy of it and watch it. You can't be stopped this day and age with the internet and stuff. So. Uh, my film's no exception. I've seen a lot worse than Zombie Village. Uh, Zombie Village is a tribute to many video nasties. Uh, there's some good influence. Uh, there's um, I was influenced by Spring Your Grave. There's some good tributes to that. Last House on the Left. Even though it's a zombie film, I've took. I, I like the Rape and Revenge films as well. I'm a fan of all video nasties. Um, so I mean, Anthropophagus the Beast. There's a classic uh, reference to that, which is even in the trailer. Uh, and that's, uh, I play three zombie extras, I hope people don't notice, the only reason I did that is to make up the numbers, but I'm the zombie who comes up the ground and grabs the young Peter Watson and then get a clump in the face from him. Now when I come out and attack him along with Matthew Verity, one of my great zombie extras who I went to a college with to study film, um, I look up to the camera with blood around my mouth, which my mum thinks I look like a clown, thanks mum, but um, that's actually supposed to be George Eastman from Anthropophagus the Beast. Uh, classic still they use for the original cover. Uh, also known as the Grim Reaper in this country. Um, I'm just trying to think, what was the first show we done for Zombie Village? Um, well, I remember coming over and um, I wasn't actually, on the first day, I don't think I was actually in any of the shots. I was just like Me doing some running. Waste. Yeah, that was it, the toxic waste. Um, yeah, no, that was really cool because I got to use Jay's camera. He doesn't let anyone touch that. I think Pete's had a go on it a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> and um, when Jay jumps over the fence and then, uh, what is it, he, he puts the toxic waste in the van and then when the van starts to reverse off, that's me filming. Um, that, was, that was a very uh, interesting thing because Jay's dad's come down and um, when we were actually going over a, a speed bump, um, I was like in the back there, like behind the, the door that's shut. Um, and I've got to push the barrel out, the door's open, and the, obviously a toxic waste goes in the river, and everyone becomes a zombie. As we went over the speed bump, um, I had no, there's no grip in there whatsoever. And if you look carefully, you'll see the door sort of slightly open. That's me going like that kind of thing, you know? <laughs> and um, I then fell back over, and he had like. Um, I think it was like a, a, a radiator or something. I was lying on the radiator for a while, got back up, and then eventually just pushed it out. And uh, that, that was the barrel. Um, next shot after that, I think we uh, carried the, um, 
the barrel over to the lake. Um, and, uh, well, when I say we, I mean I. <laughs> uh, that, that was interesting. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't full of toxic waste. Otherwise, I think it would have been getting them done for some sort of health and safety. But then again, if you look at some of our shots, you um, <laughs> there ain't much health and safety in that. But, um, yeah, I think, well, we all signed Jay's contract uh, when we first started in that. So, uh, yeah, if we die, you know, we don't get a penny. <laughs> After the first sort of attempts and real, like, experimental stuff, we, um, well, I collaborated with Jason to, uh, make uh, Beyond Darkness, which is my real first directed film, which I co-directed. Well, there's two directors on the film, uh, Beyond Darkness, which I'm really proud of. It's my first movie. And um, it just went down really well. Like, I acted and starred in that one as well with, with Dan. And it's, um, it's really a prequel to Obsession because it's called Beyond Darkness, Dave's Story. And the night when obsession happens and Katie's murdered and Jack's killed and uh, finally the killer, um, Dave is away, uh, supposedly Katie's boyfriend. And uh, Daniel comes out in the garden looking for him. He's supposed to be like the best friend of uh, Dave. And where he's supposed to be on that night is away doing a drug deal uh, with uh, the um, up beyond darkness, so that where the film's sort of based around, and uh, what happens that night is also a horror-infested um, experience for Dave. Not only has his girlfriend died that night, but he's also got knocked out and beaten up by some mysterious character that keeps appearing uh, within this drug deal setting. And it was um, it was kind of based on the on an idea that I had just that night. We uh. I was with Dan, just um, chilling around his house, and uh, we had this idea for a movie. Quickly got out Jason's old camera and uh, started filming straight away. Uh, we almost finished that film that night, but um, we had to come back later on, get all the clothes back and stuff, and film some additional footage. Some of the scenes wasn't coming up, and uh, we had some problems with the camera, actually. We were um, filming, and a few scenes got deleted, or just were never filmed, probably Jason's soddy cameraman and didn't press the record button or something. <laughs> we had to re-record a few uh, scenes. But overall that film came out really well and um, considering the script was about half an A4 piece of paper it really did uh, look good in the end. A few little special effects there on by Jason, his editing's really good. And, uh, I love the opening sequence, that's probably the favourite bit of the film. The uh, Dave tripping out on drugs as he's uh, going towards a drug deal. As I said, this is one of the, the biggest uh, horror films we've ever done, so getting the right casting is uh, crucial. We used many of the peop um, the same people, Pete and Ken, like we did in Zombies in the Wood, who are both like really good actors. <laughs> and um, we yeah, I'm not being sarcastic there. <laughs> um, to play, and Ken just seemed the perfect person to play the redneck um, for Zombies in the Wood. Um, just mainly because... Zombie village. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the perfect part to be in, to play the redneck in Zombie Village. Um, as I said, this was a huge cast. We got loads of um, uh, friends to act in it, and they really wanted to be zombies, like having blood all over their faces and just have bits taken out of them, which doesn't, I suppose, doesn't say much for the the friends we have <laughs> who really love that sort of stuff. Jason's uh, whipping boy in his films, including this one, is Dan, who plays uh, Larry the bartender because uh, he always gets beaten up and um, <clears throat> mutilated in all his films because he's just so good at it. Um, in this one he's, he's also a zombie so he gets his, um, what is it, his face falls off. When um, you see the, uh, the, the barrel go down into the water of the, of the lake and that, um, there is, you, I, I don't know, I, I didn't realise Jay was like filming 
thinking that after really, you know, done the shot, he left the camera running or something, and uh, you hear me go, Jesus Christ, it smells in there, and it did. It, uh, it smelled like shit, and Jay threw himself in that um, when he was um, the zombie killing Pete, uh, the, the traveller. Um, yeah, so I don't know how he done that, because he tells us it was freezing cold, and uh, <laughs> he looked quite a bit of a mess. Um, the next day, well, it was Tuesday, Jay was off filming um, at, on another project, but um, back on the Wednesday, um, I believe... Um, it was a whole like, car sequence. It was a car sequence. Oh, yeah, the car sequence. That was good fun. Um, yeah, I, that was really, really scary, like, whilst we were doing it, but after it was done, that was, uh, that was quite cool to, like, reflect on it. Um, you see me on my, uh, my dad's push bike, driving down uh, as the redneck. And um, what happens is, yeah, Jay the zombie is uh, coming to just try and kill and eat anyone he can see. And he sees me, so he comes after me. I get a little two-shooter out after panicking and going, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, shoot him, and he dies. Now, he's the actually only zombie that I can remember in the film that actually gets shot in the head and dies. Um, Jay, am I right on that? I don't think I am. Am I right? There's a few that die. Did they die? That's Trigger the dog. Yeah, this is Trigger. Um, uh, he's he's also in the credits in that. Um, uh, he's uh, Jay's dog. Uh, also, yes, uh, he was the one that was eating um, the head, which I got a bit of a taste of as well. Um, go on, say say hello, camera, Trigger. No, camera, Trigger. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, obsession. Ah, oh, like first came to victory. <laughs> Again, he got me to do a stunt, jumping off of the roof. So basically, that's his main thing for me, just hurting myself. As you saw the fall, my ass in the air, quite painful. Then he pushed me down some stairs, thought it'd be funny to film that. Everyone had a good chuckle again. Not very funny to me. Peter spanking himself, very wrong. <laughs> then, uh, then we moved on to some other films, but yeah, Zombie Village. Best film by far, easiest, just so good. Uh, we've got so many people in it as opposed to the normal about six people we've had max I think before that but it's just been really good to do working with Jason very determined on making the film it's just a lot of fun my worst scene probably to work on was the hunting man scene when we were working in the pub and Ken was just scary he's a good man he's scary though he went loopy at Pete and then favorite scene was even though it was quite painful jumping off the roof because everyone just had a laugh of it. So yeah, that's my best point. Just enjoy the film, have fun, and yeah, brilliant. Good night, Milton Keynes. Well, let's say, uh, my good old friend Ken Deck, who uh, I put him through hell really because he plays a lot of mad characters in my films. He was really good at this. Everyone I've shown this film to, and I've sat with screenings and watched this film with people, everyone loves that character. Ken pulled that character off how I wanted. He'd come up with some good one-liners that he put in that I actually thought were so fantastic I left them in there. Um, he was a good influence. And there's some not so clever ideas he wanted to do because he's bad. Um, but no, he was really good at that. He, he, he got the character how I wanted it. Um, I really didn't have to direct him that much. I directed him as well as I could, but the guy was really good. You just have to give him, you just have to sit down and go through it with him and he, and he gets it and he's on the ball. And it allows you to work with more setting the scene up and, and, and the shots and other actors because you know he, he's very much in a lot of the scenes um, I had to work with him a lot we did a good intense week filming down in Milton Keynes with him um, the only thing he really wasn't keen on is the attempted rape in chapter 7 with Colette who was a great sport Colette Green um, she uh, she came all the way down from London. We threw her in the mud. Her top got ripped open. We had fake blood all over her. And there's not many girls would let me do that, especially if she weren't getting paid. I will pay everyone on my next project if I get a budget. Um, but Ken wasn't very happy about doing the attempted rape scene. In fact, if you watch that scene, it's very tame. It's very you know. I wanted it in there because it's a shock. It's a surprise, and um, it makes Ken an anti-hero, you know, you look at Ken, and he's not a nice person, but he's leading the film, and I like that, I like breaking conventions of Hollywood, I like to be daring and risky, 
Uh, what's the point of being the same all the time? And um, if anything, I wanted you to. I, I wanted it to make you hate the character that Ken plays so much that you don't care that he dies. He gets it nasty. He gets it in a cannibal Farrock style, up against the wall, eaten. Um, I wanted Ken to die. I wanted you not to like the character. That rape, attempted rape scene, makes you really hate him. But then you feel sorry for Colette and you care for Colette. Colette's the character who leads it at the end, who's in, in the middle, is he's introduced. The film plays like Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, who I'm a big fan of. So another big tribute. Um, and I've never seen a zombie film like that. I think it's the original Dawn of Dead Meat Pulp Fiction as a zombie film, or, or was like Zombie Flesh Eaters meets Pulp Fiction, which I think is new and inventive. And, and what, I was, what I was saying about Colette is, is um, you care for Colette, it's a shame that she dies. Uh, you feel sorry for her. Uh, that, that was the idea as well. You just get so much pity for Colette, you just really wanted to have a good day and get away. But it ain't gonna happen. It's also a surprise that she really gets. Well, she doesn't get killed by Ken, but she's on death's door through Ken, and I don't think you expect that watching it. That was another twist I threw in. Uh, talking about problems with Beyond Darkness, uh, we had a few, like, time of people. It was hard to get people uh, everywhere in the same place at the same time organising. That was a bit of a mission. Um, <laughs> also, the battery on the camera that we were using was terrible. It was so old. It I think Jason made a film in it when he was, must have been 14, 10 or something, when he was really young and uh, that camera was pretty knackered. So we had to plug it into the mains a lot, so some of the shots we had to um, compromise on and just uh, do what we could with it. Also there was a disaster in Jason's editing suite where uh, me and him were up in the... Uh, up in his editing suite having a look at some of the shots and just cutting a few together. Uh, the film was really starting to look good and uh, we, it was about lunchtime. we had a drink and a, a packet of crisps or whatever and Jason the, the idiot <laughs> spilled a pint of coke down the back of his editing suite. The look on his face if you could see it <laughs> it was a horror film I saw the whole thing in slow motion Jason shit himself <laughs> as the coke poured down the back of his editing suite. Luckily it didn't really affect too much and we did get it back together but that was a disaster. Yeah I did actually hit Jay's wing mirror, I hit the side of his car, um, I hit his wheel. Um, then uh, when there's, yeah I did a bit of a silly thing, I don't actually know how to drive a car. And uh, when I was reversing it out, I left the handbrake up. And all I can hear is Jay going, What the hell are you doing with my car? The, the wheels aren't moving. I went, No, 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 it's right. The handbrake's up. <laughs> um, for the user, those of you who don't know how to drive a car, if you leave the handbrake up, um, that's the brakes on. So I was reversing, and the, wheels were, the back wheels were just going just stationary. And God knows what I've done to Jay's car, and I, I've been told it was okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the next take, I did all right, but um, you know, first out, drove off. Thing is, um, I did steal Jason's car in first gear, and I can just imagine what was Jay, Jason was doing, going, "Where's he taking my car? Where's he going?" <laughs> um, drove it all the way down to the gravel pit, where, um, funny enough, is where you see me in the next scene, um, and then that's when Jason comes along and we have a bit of discussion. Well, I drove back down there. I drove back up and I could see Jay walking down the street smiling at me I'm like, oh yeah, I got your car. And um, I can't remember how I stopped it. Jay had to open the door and go, yeah, you uh, let go of the clutch, uh, put it in neutral, la la. Uh, another um, person we worked with was Matt, who we used to go to college with. Um, he's now at university and he really wanted to be involved in Zombie Village, mainly because he hasn't been involved in any other than college projects. Uh, before he has never done any like of the outside films that we've done. Um, he's he's a really good uh, zombie. He's the the zombie that Pete, who's the hitchhiker, uh, first meets. Is the first zombie that he comes in contact with. And as Pete's uh, running off, Matt was a really good zombie because he he was just a stiff as a, you know like the zombie should be. So he's running like he's just messed himself. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, yeah, he was really good. Outside film industry, uh, I'm, uh, I'm also into like lots of other things. Uh, I, I skateboard, for for instance, which um, also links to like filming and stuff. Because um, Jason and me uh, made a film called Picture This, which is a uh, aggressive sports film that we made. It's a skate video with me and a couple of my friends that Jason edited for me, which is really good. It's, uh, it was really good fun. Lots of uh, falling over, and um, there's some really good shots in there. Some, some good stuff. It was a good, a good, uh, fun film to make because uh, it was really relaxed. There wasn't like anything we really needed to do. It was just have some fun. We're gonna film it, make a little movie out of it, which is good. That's that's kind of like what a lot of Jason's films are like. Even though he is quite demanding, but. Um, he does let us have fun and stuff on set, which is always good. Get more into it that way. Um, yeah. Well, you all know about Zombie Village. Hopefully, you've seen it on the on the disc. But, uh, the film that really started off Zombie Village was uh, Zombies in the Wood, which is the short horror film that uh, won won a uh, competition, the competition winning film. Uh, we won best film down in Margate, the twenty uh, two days later film com uh, competition. Uh, we won a thousand uh, pound film com thousand uh, pound film training on a uh, reel to reel, which Jason and uh, Natalie are gonna take part in, and we won a load of DVDs and stuff, which is really good. The film um, was lots of fun, lots of fun making that film lots of action in it and even though <laughs> it was the uh, same cast really, me, Ken, Jason Jason had a cameo in that one with uh, Natalie filming Dan missed out on that on that film, bit of a corker he missed out on he, he's, he, <laughs> tears in his eyes after missing out on that film Yeah. <laughs> then the next thing after that was um... Jay wanted me to shoot zombies outside of the side of the car with a rifle and um, I'm, we're going down quite a public street and I'm out the, uh, out the side and I'm like shouting action so Nat can really hear me so it's like start rolling and um, you know there's loads of cars, there's people watching and I'm going DIE YOU FUCKING ZOMBIE! DIE! you know and um, yeah, there was a few people looking at me <laughs> And then, um, okay, well, basically, we've done a couple of takes of that. People, uh, I was starting to get really worried. I was, I was really shitting myself that the police were going to come along and put me in jail. I don't know, Jay was going to get, like, fined or something. Um, so, both me and Jay were like, no, we shouldn't be doing this, we shouldn't be, we've got to get out of it, sort of thing. Um, so then we went down to Tomwell Lane, and uh, that was really good. Uh, no cars, no one around. Um, there's a deleted scene down in Tomwell Lane, and uh, <laughs> and um, you can see that. I, Jay tells me that's going to be on the disc. Um, as we're coming down, um, I'm going, "You're not fucking taking me! You're not fucking taking me! You fucking zombie!" And then, like, words to that effect, and just uh, shooting random zombies. And then I killed. Uh, well, I didn't kill him, but I shot the, um, the 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 Scottish zombie. We're calling him. He's got ginger hair. Funny little hat. Yeah, one of my favourite bits of the movie is when Jason um, is getting uh, mutilated by two of the zombies. Uh, who one, one of them is Pete and one of them is um, Elliot. And uh, he gets, they just rip all his insides out from his stomach. And if you notice um, carefully, he's holding, he's, he's sticking his thumb up like that. Um, <laughs> which none of us realised until we actually got in the editing suite that he was doing. But by then it was too late. Zombies in the Wood was uh, Jason's first zombie film. And everyone knows that he loves zombie films and he's always been into horror and stuff. So I think he was really stoked to do it, really happy to do it. Because um, we got the letter from the competition. Uh, I think it was two days before the deadline. And it was supposed to be a 20, 20, oh no, what was it, 48 hour movie. And um, we made it in just 
just under 17 hours, I think it was. Or was it less than that? 14. <laughs> 14 hours, there you go. <laughs> um, which is pretty funny. Jason gave me a, f a phone call. I was just like, we need to make a movie. Get down here. So about five minutes later, I was uh, covered in blood, getting uh, shot in the head, and then uh, shot about 20 times in the chest, and then shot in the head again, covered in a zombie suit. It was, it was good fun, though. As again, Jason, demanding director. Two minutes, bloody. After I was just after school, I had homework and stuff to do, but he just he just grabbed me out of my my, my social life. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Jason, making me do so. So um, yeah, Daniel and and Pete brought a few of their friends around that night, and what happened was uh, a couple of them went away. I think a couple stayed in that. Uh, Joe, I think was his name. Um. But we uh, did done the scene where um, uh, Daniel had been totally mutilated, and uh, he had salami. Oh, we had to put like all this salami. It took forever. And when we were having to get him from the kitchen to outside, um, was it everybody grabbed, grabbed a limb basically and carried him. And as we're carrying him out, um, Jason wasn't wearing any socks. Or, uh, no, he was not socks. wasn't wearing any shoes. And yeah, I was kind of wearing my big boots and that, and I sort of may have stepped it on his foot, and all we hear was this, ah, I forget that. <laughs> um, we got him outside, put him down on the lawn, and uh, he was absolutely, from what he was saying, he was uh, really, really cold and that. Um, uh, then Jay uh, got changed into um, uh, the, the toxic arsehole, as I like to call him. Um, started running past him, that's when Daniel grabbed at him, and. You know, um, they ain't done a, done a runoff sort of thing. Um, one of the worst bits, I think, is that in the film is chapter five, which is the London scene. Um, that was one of the, that was the first bit of footage we ever filmed. We went down to London, um, in, uh, yeah, in one of uh, Jason's friends' flats. We filmed that whole scene like in uh, two days. Um, I think it's one of the worst bits of the film because I don't think that it goes with the style of of the rest of it. I think the lighting needs like major work, but you don't really notice these things till after when you come back and then and by that time we hadn't filmed any other footage of the film, so we didn't really know what kind of style it would take take on. Um, I think that as a scene on its own. It's really good. We had loads of uh, people come down who were zombies in the flat, which just packed it uh, full of. And there was like, we had um, three special makeup artists on the film. I think two of them who were actually like professional makeup artists, so we could um, have like the best. Really, they were really good uh, special effects. Um, the main actors uh, in that scene were Abby Collette who's in the film later on, um, Abby, Tamsin and Justin, they were uh, all really good, we did, there were some really good um, um, spe uh, special effects and they were good actors, they were all, um, most of them were all professional actors except um, Colette, they all had a theatre background so they were very good at um, looking scared and, you know, doing all the horrific uh, scenes. Uh, one thing that I haven't really talked about is uh, the financial side of these films, which is uh, not much, really. I think Obsession had about 50 quid put on it, and um, <laughs> Zombies in the Wood had about 20 quid. <laughs> really, for like the films that we're making, and not, not a lot of people um, think about this, but that's, that's nothing to make a film, really. The only thing I really haven't touched on so far is a uh, zombie village, which is um, the real reason for this interview in the disc that we're making. It's a 40 minute film. I wouldn't really say it's a short, but there's no other real <laughs> name for it. But um, it's a really good film. You actually get the feel of a real zombie flick when you're watching the film. Uh, I think Jason's done that really well. It seems like there is an infestation of zombies and they are attacking this village. 
and um, I play the the young traveller that enters the village in that film, which is a it was a good little part. I get to do some good stuff. I get covered in mud and stinging nettles and blood and it's all it's all fun. It's all good stuff. So <laughs> I get uh, mullered. Okay, so um, we got Daniel outside. He was uh, pretty messed up and out on the face and shit. Uh, then we went to move to Jay. Jay got totally annihilated by a couple of zombies. That was the worst scene. Uh, I mean, when they were ripping at that, I mean, it looks like, I don't know, some old moldy flesh with some shit. I mean, it's just... I mean, like, when we were, uh, me and Joe were showing it to a couple of mates and that, they'd start, they'd got a bit rude and they started talking over it. And when they seen, they seen that, like, fucking hell. <laughs> Um, I hope you're bleeping out these. <laughs> uh, where's some rights in 18, I reckon. Yeah, Tim came along on, um, I believe it was Thursday. And, um, what happened was, uh, we started doing, uh, shoots of the head. Uh, with a dog shot and that. Um, that was kind of cool and that. Then we moved on to me, uh, in the fields, um, trying to find Colette. Of course, this was all filmed before Colette had even come down. Um... And you can't, I mean, we had a couple of audio problems on the final take, but um, what what I was saying was, well, I gotta find you! I gotta cut for your boobies! But you don't really hear it very well. So um, there you go, guys, that's that's what I was shouting. And also, now I'm gonna rip you into a new one. Um, I was just, Jason's direction to me was, go absolutely mental. So I just went absolutely mental. And uh, right now, I've been joined by Trigger. And uh, yeah. Hello, Trigger, how are you? Uh, overall, we, I, um, I me and Jay had a really good time um, making it, mainly because we had never done anything quite so big before. Uh, the last film we did was just a ten minute short, and this, <clears throat> and Zombie Village was um, about forty minutes long overall. The uh, cast and crew worked really hard, and everyone really pulled together and wanted to make it um, a, a really good film. So, when you w uh, watch this back, uh, hopefully you will enjoy it, and, and enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Yeah, a lot of people worked on the film, and uh, to me the film is really a... a, a collaboration. Collaboration of uh, many people just working together, giving in their ideas. That's what's really good about working with Jason, he always lets you um, put in your thoughts and stuff. And although it is really Jason's vision, all of us do work on it, and uh, I think we're all proud of it because of that. Um, probably my favourite bit is uh, the drive-by with uh, Ken hanging out of the car, and uh, zombies getting popped off in the bushes, and the Scotch zombie getting slaughtered, which a lot of people don't really notice, but uh, that Scotch zombie is actually Jason in a... Uh, <laughs> In a, in a hat with a wig. A lot of people don't really see that. Um, probably my worst, the, the bit that I don't really... Uh, I do actually like most of the film. There are a few bits which I don't, I don't really like. There's a few bits in the pub where I thought I could have done better. After we'd done the film uh, shooting of me trying to chase uh, Colette and stuff, uh, we went back uh, to Jason's house and we done the hunting man scene. Uh, Pete came along and uh, then eventually Daniel and then um, uh, oh god the hunting man scene that was so so cool. Um, yes I was drinking whiskey. Uh, they they provided it in that. I mean I swallowed it. Um, we done a few takes of that so yeah I was um, when I when I when I drink whiskey I can get a little bit angry in that and uh, me and Pete had a bit of a disagreement and uh, my lawyers at the moment are advising me not to talk about it. So um, changes so it's like we got uh, Jay up in, in the rafters and uh, we'd, we'd done the shot with uh, Pete going towards the bar and that was a really cool shot uh, and it's my idea, more mine! And I did copy it off Evil Dead 2 so um, yeah, oh, actually it could have been Evil Dead 1 as well, they done a rafter shot. One of the best bits in the film, I think, is the uh, the final uh, the final assault, where Jason gets proper mullered. I don't quite know how we did it, but um, it really works well, and that is a gory, 
gory um, sequence when me and Elliot pull open his chest and start eating his insides. I think it really works well. I don't know what it is. I think it's the mixture we used and obviously my brilliant acting, but Jason obviously put a little bit into it. Um, <laughs> and when we pulled open the uh, chest, it, it really does get to you. You think, that's got to hurt. <laughs> uh, another bit which not many people notice is uh, as, uh, as Jason is getting supposedly gutted and his insides torn out, his thumbs up. His right hand, if you look closely, is... Uh, in the middle of the air with his thumb up giving directions to the cameraman which is Natalie at the time as we watched it back we had a few laughs over that what a prat Friday yeah uh, that's when Colette came down and um, yeah uh, I introduced myself Colette everything was really cool and that and that but I, I tell you that, that that scene where I tried to take advantage of it I really really hate doing because I've, I've had a friend who sort of like um, had some problems with that herself so um, that was a really hard scene for me to do um, I really hate doing that but um, nothing happened I and mean, when you actually watch it it's actually quite funny yeah there are a few moments on uh, Zombie Village where I got a little bit scared of Ken's antics for instance the uh, pub scene we were, we're actually at the set at the moment the uh, quality pub we set up um, where Ken necks a couple of whiskies and uh, we did have real whiskey on the set didn't use any cold tea or anything which kind of regretting he, uh, he had two takes at it next two whiskies really fell over when we were playing pool that was just an accident I happened to be filming it got really pissed off through the queue at me so I just walked out Jason filmed it like pretty flukely and we um, we got we got the take but it, it was just complete fluke that was I was so happy with that because I went home. I was, I was really upset, and Jason had to kick Jason, uh, Ken out for a little while because uh, he was he was out of his head. Yeah, that went really well. Me and Ken still talking, regrettably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does play a good character in the film. He's got uh, he's got some good accent, and uh, hope you enjoy this disc. Like, uh, had really good fun making it with all these guys. It was just a really good time. <sighs> I'm Peter Watson. Thanks for listening. Hope you had a good time. I don't believe in happy endings because life isn't happy, really, is it? I believe in realism and realistic. I like films, they're an escape. I also like to put a bit of realism in there. So, you've got the far fetched film and the realism together. I think it makes a good combination. Um, not everyone gets played happily. And Zombie Village is just another story about that. You know, it's not a happy ending. If the world was invested with zombies, I really don't think we we're going to survive. I don't think the human race is capable of coping with problems like that. I think the human race concentrate on other things. Not that zombies are ever going to arise. I'm not that crazy. Zombie Village is a film that I've been wanting to make for years. Um, I was 16 and I wrote a zombie script when I was at college, uh, doing media, doing film and television studies. Um, I, I wrote a script, it was ambitious, it involved the army, it involved action, and, and, and toxic bells falling off of vans, which is like Zombie Village. Uh, but I needed money, it's only so much later when I'm 20 years old I've actually really been able to kind of put it off. Uh, I, I sort of took that script I had wrote and adapted it so that it could be made feasibly around here with the budget, with the people I know. Because obviously, you know, I've got to limit myself to what we can do in a really small little film production. Um, so, I think I think it's good. Uh, I would like to do the big ambitious zombie film that I did write. Um, this is just kind of a taster for it. If I can raise the money, I will. I'm sure I will one day soon. Um, you know, a lot of the people who are involved with Zombie Village, I will definitely try and get involved in it. Because um, that was all great, you know. Special thanks to Daniel Mitchell. Uh, I always put him through a lot. We call him my whipping boy, like John Morgan was in the uh, Italian video masters. Um, because uh, he always plays characters that get hurt. <laughs> and I don't do it on purpose, Dan. You're just so good at it. Um, I do like your one-liner in this. Don't listen to him, he's full of shit. 
Um, I think there's a hidden message there to you, Ken. I'm only joking, mate. Everyone knows where my inspiration comes from, from Zombie Village. Um, I just really wanted to get a film made. And I've just wanted that for years. That's why I wrote... I don't actually know if I called it Zombie Village back then when I wrote it, but I just wrote this zombie script that's very... It is kind of similar. I, I very much adapted it, but I, I, I took the main principle of the film, really. Um, but basically, you know, I love the country. I love knowing to run, I love being in the woods and the openness. You take that, I love zombies, you take that. You throw some innocent victims in, you've got your, your location, you've got your zombies, you've got your, you, you got your victims, you just work on your characters. And, and, and you've got a kind of zombie film, really. You, you take it from there and you just be inventive. Because all zombie films are the same kind of thing. Um, I mean, the message for me in Zombie Village is what am I saying? It's toxic waste in the water. You know, it's an environmental message, really, isn't it? About, you know, the health of the world. The chemicals getting thrown around, it happens, and you never know. One day, a human race may go too far and awake the dead. You might, you guys probably have quite a laugh, because um, when I was um, looking for zombies, hunting for them, um, Lewis, the zombie, jumps down and that, and I turn around. I swear, I didn't see him. Absolutely, I didn't see him. And then, um, turn back around. Started walking along, and then this fucking monkey zombie jumped over me, <laughs> and then um, took a pop shot at him. Started walking back and that, and then this fucking other zombie, yeah, uh, Lewis again, he, he come at me, and I shot him, and then um, yeah, and then uh, then this other one come at me as well. So uh, that's when things started to go bad for the redneck. Um, that's pretty much the last you see of him, really. I don't think he'll be in any sequels, because um, I think he's pretty much dead, unless he came back as a zombie. Although, you, you could say he just got a, a bit of a scratch or something, but um, not <laughs> not really that whole blood coming out of your mouth or thing. <laughs> um, I, I'm looking forward to a sequel. If there will be a sequel, who knows. I'll just leave you guys in suspense. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, got back, absolutely freezing cold. Um, because, uh, you, all that blood and shit all over me. Luckily, Jay didn't make me go in the lake. Uh, there was going to be a scene where he done an apocalypse now, where I come out from the lake, guns are blazing at the zombies. I was supposed to be totally wiping them out and that. And, um, but it never happened, because I think at the locations where we were going to do it, um, it was just way too cold. Plus, I, I couldn't really see myself going in that lake anyway. But Jay didn't want it. I would have done it if he asked me to do it. But we didn't do it in the end. Um, I can't admit, I was a little bit disappointed. I did want to do that scene. Um, but in another bit, I was a bit relieved. Um, luckily, we were spare change of clothes. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, the shoot, really. Um, all I can say is I really enjoyed doing Zombie Village. Uh, I enjoyed working with the guys. Um, every time I come around here, we always have a laugh. I mean, right now, I, I am actually scared for my life, because I'm sure they're going to do something in a second. <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, there's only one interview left, and that's, uh, that's Nat. Uh, I don't know if Jay's done his, but, because uh, I would have loved to have got some revenge on theirs, but, uh, if we're going to do any... Okay, put the pipe down. <laughs> and that's me, really. Um, hopefully I'll be in more of Jay's um, shoots than that. Uh, you might see me in Toxic Zombies, or Zombies in the West. Also, I'm thinking of doing a film, um, uh, Eternal Struggle. Um, it's about uh, some nice Templar fighting the devil and lots of really bad zombies and shit like that. And there's going to be Inflamaniacs and kind of weird shit. So, um, yeah, that might be coming around 2007, maybe. Alright. Zombie Village was great fun to make. It was the hardest film I've ever made. The hardest project I've ever been involved with. And I've done a lot of films, I've been involved in a lot of projects, I've worked on a lot of TV and films, and Zombie Village was hard for me. Um, I had to do a lot myself though, I think that's what made it harder, and I really won't get that much help. There were some creative differences on set, um, I had problems, but at the end of the day, if I'm the writer and director, my vision has to be shown, it's all about my vision. I funded it, I just got off my ass and made this. I've always wanted to make films, you know, what's the best thing to do is just get off your ass and make them. That's advice I have for people who want to get into the film industry, want to make films, uh, just make something. 
pick up a home camcorder. I mean, we shot um, we, we shot Zombie Village on a Canon XL1S and an XL1. Um, I'm very fortunate to have the equipment. Uh, but again, I've had investors and I've been able to set up a production company. Hi there. Um, this is the shack of the Rednecks. Um, the Redneck uh, would live in this shack and he has many lands afar. And yobos keep coming over there and uh, they keep going on to his land. And every time that the uh, Redneck sees someone, he comes out of it and he goes, Hey, oh, you! Get the fuck away from my land, you fucking yobos! You fucking yobos! Get off my land! You fucking bastards! I'll link you! Action. You bastards! You know it's coming on my land! Get the fuck off! So, um, what was going to happen with the shark? Uh, but it did get deleted from um, uh, the final uh, uh, cut. Um, we never actually shot it anyway, but we were going to have uh, a miniature of the shack and what was going to happen was I was going to be surrounded by zombies and um, they were going to, zombies were going to start coming in and um, well that redneck you might have noticed he had a rifle he had a two shooter, a little old western gun he had two automatic handguns um, and he had his throwing knife the guy was a fucking gun nutter we were going to have like, ex we were going to make out he had explosives or something inside the shack he was going to quickly get away um, or he could have stayed in the shack and died and blown himself up, but he blows up his shack. We were gonna have, uh, we we're gonna make out matchsticks and stuff. And uh, Jay has a footage of um, a big, huge explosion in his archive, and that would have looked really cool. But it never, ne never did anything with it. Uh, the storyline just went away from it, really. I mean, uh, that would, that might have slowed it down. Um, but um, I, who knows? This shack will probably get used um, in other films of uh, Jay's and um, I eventually I imagine that big directors and stuff will be wanting to use this shack because it's such a historical landmark thank you my name's Ken Dirk and I was the redneck I like making art films I've made many art films uh, film is all about meaning so making art films is a really good thing to do um, you know because if you haven't got a budget and you haven't really got many editing facilities. If you haven't got any editing, I mean you can edit on camera, there's so many, I mean having a PC with the Windows editor and stuff, and you can do that. I know well, I know of someone who's done that and actually got a screening at the Curse and Cinema in Soho and have been very successful. Uh, effects on camera, just be creative and arty, it's all about standing out. Um, and I hope Zombie Village stands out really. That's also the aim, is to make something that stands out, to give me some recognition. Um, there are things about Zombie Village I don't like. There's some shots and some cuts and some scenes the way they flow because I even edited it and um, it comes down to the fact that I've learned a bit of a lesson as well. And there was trouble. I couldn't get access to a, another camera angle through some problems. Um, we won't go into too much detail, there were some problems, so there were some shots that were done that I couldn't actually get access to. Um, and um, I really didn't have the shots I needed to cut away from something, I just had a shot that I had to make do with it. And, it, and you can tell. Um, and it, the, the, the film is fine, it's just one particular scene that, that it, it's all about, really, that, that caused problems. Um, and it's only that one scene, um, but the rest of it, I, I am happy with Zombie Village. It's a big ambitious project for me, it was a 40 minute zombie film, made on £150, mostly funded from me, and and, and, um, and I mean, we, we did not do bad. I want to say thank you to everyone who helped me. Uh, there's Tim, who uh, I uh, DP'd and said to Natalie for the Murder Mystery Games that are great, they've turned out really good. Um, and I gave them some payback by being a cameraman on my film. I want to say thank you to Natalie because uh, she did a lot. A special thanks to Peter Watson because he really helped me a lot. And all my zombie extras, there's Leighton, there's Joe. Um, I mean, even Peter was an ex zombie extra. Ken even got into zombie extra. Um, Ken did wonderful acting for me, but so did Pete. And, 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 and so did I, thanks to myself. I was great. Um, 
<laughs> I hate myself on camera. I was literally low on people. That's why I got involved in acting. Um, um, I don't want to lift miss anyone out, um, but special thanks to everyone really. Uh, a lot of people helped me. The, the, the credits list everyone. There's a special thank on the credits. Um, it was a blast making it. I hope to do many more zombie films soon. You never know. Zombie Village may even have a sequel one day soon. Just watch this space. Oh, enjoy the f in, and enjoy the film, yeah. <laughs> That it, mate. Dan, what's up, mate? We don't, Dan. Ah! We don't. Please, 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 get off me, get off me, get off me. Come back for next year's movie, yeah. Hey, compliment. Get off me, yeah. Ah, ah, ah no. Ah, shit. Ah, fuck it out. Ah, oh god. Ah. <laughs> Action! <laughs> Shit! Action! Three, two, one, action! <laughs> oh no! You <laughs> fucking bastard! From Commando now, because I now know they are zombies in the woods. No, in the village. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. But the zombies in the woods from the last one. I'm rambling now, because I ramble a lot. <laughs> oh, fucking. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> no, I said, what the fuck are you laughing at? <laughs> Action! Action. Out of here with your papers! You're fucking crazy, you son of a bitch! Shit! You ready? Action! Oh, oh it's nice. <laughs> Can I come towards the camera? No, go towards Colette. Okay. I don't think I can watch any of my family and Jay, you're still oh, recording, oh, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got that on tape. <laughs> you're still recording. We didn't get that. Yeah, no, you flipped it on recording. <laughs> it's, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be giving away this secret, but yeah, I was the sailor zombie. Yeah, and I uh, started eating down on uh, Bob's head and stuff. And then, um, oh shit, that's going to sound really bad. No, you got to cut that out. Oh, where's the fly? Come on! <laughs> 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 <laughs>